I'm gonna talk about American football in today's video, but this is not a video about football. I'm gonna connect it to tennis in just a second. So just bear with me for just a second. So I grew up in Wisconsin. I've been a Packers fan my entire life. And this year, we happened to play the two teams that went to the Super Bowl. We played both the Chiefs, spoilers, by the way, turn this off if you don't uh, wanna know who won the Super Bowl. Uh, we played the Chiefs, we beat the Chiefs who just won the Super Bowl. And we also played against the 49ers in the playoffs and we lost to the 49ers. So, so think about this for a second. And sport, this is just kind of like a thing. It's not just about football, American football. Like it's about sports. So if we beat the Chiefs, then the surface level assumption is the Packers are better than the Chiefs, right? And the Chiefs beat the 49ers last night. So the assumption should be that the 49ers are not as good as the Chiefs, and therefore the Packers should be better than the 49ers, right? Because we beat the Chiefs and the Chiefs beat the 49ers. But guess what? It's not that simple. Sports is never that simple. When we played the 49ers a couple weeks ago, we lost to the 49ers. So on paper, that doesn't make sense, right? It just kind of like eats its own tail, like logically. Just because team A can beat B, uh, can beat team B and team B can beat team C does not mean that team A can beat team C. It doesn't work that way. There's this, this kind of cliche phrase in American football, and that is any on any given Sunday, any team can beat any other team. Now, why is that? Why is it that one team can lose to one to uh, one team, uh, win against another one, but they don't necessarily match up down the road, those two other teams. Well, it's because there's so many variables. There's so many positions. There's so many players. There's offense. There's defense. There's special teams. Within each of those types of categories of players, you've got different ranges of talent, different ranges of effort, different ranges of um, how prepared they are, how ready they are, injuries. Like uh, we could we could come up with a list of literally a thousand different variables. And so depending on which any given Sunday, which Sunday, which team is playing which team, you're going to get different results. And I don't think tennis players do a very good job of accounting for those types of of things. We don't have in any given Sunday kind of mindset about tennis as tennis players. In fact, we <laughs> tennis players on average tend to be very myopic and like uh, singularly focused on technique. My forehand is bigger than their forehand. My serve is bigger than their serve. My, my game looks prettier than their game. And so I must be a better player. And so therefore, I should win against this player. And tennis players come up with all kinds of crazy logical like excuses and reasons besides the fact that tennis is deep and tennis is complicated and day to day, take the same player with the same racket on the same court with the same skills and day to day, an individual player can play completely different qualities and levels of game. You, you know this from playing tennis. On Monday, you're same game is not going to show up is on Tuesday is on Wednesday is on Thursday. Is it ballpark going to be, you know, in the vicinity of like the way you should play tennis? Sure. Yeah. But the nuances, think about this for a second. Remember I talked about offense, like on the offensive side of the game in football, there's a whole bunch of players that are just, uh, developed and drafted and specialized in playing offense. There's a whole bunch of players on every American football team, and I, same thing in European football, right? Uh, AKA uh, soccer here in the United States. You got players that specialize on offense. You got players that specialize on defense. You got players that specialize on playing goalie. Got players in American football that specialize in just kicking the ball and like nothing else. Well, guess what? In tennis, you have to cover all the bases yourself. You are the offense. You are the defense. You are the special teams. And you have to fulfill all of those roles with the same body, with the same anticipation, with the same footwork patterns, with the same knowledge and understanding of like strategy and tactics, with the same technical you know, skill set and level of talent and athleticism. And we have to somehow figure out how to spread what we have on any given day across all of those different categories of different skills that have to be 
utilized in order to play the game of tennis and somehow try to maintain our best quality or level of all of those individual skills day after day after day after day. So A, this is really, really hard. B, it makes for a lot of very complicated um, comparisons and like day-to-day -day interactions between ourselves and other players. And so it means that just because you can dominate one player and they beat somebody else doesn't mean that you can beat that third player. Does not mean that. And for some reason, tennis players are like eternally confounded by that. And there's like angered by it. Uh, the fact that it's not just about uh, purity of strokes or like aesthetic, like how they look as a player. In reality, it's like hundreds and hundreds of levels and layers deeper than that. But I think players get stuck, tennis players get stuck at just like looking at the surface. But if you tell like a probably, I, I don't know any, well, I, that's not true. I know a couple of soccer fans. But if you tell a, a soccer fan or like an American football fan, um, like, oh, this team should beat that team because of X, the conversation's not going to just stop there. There's all kinds of back and forth about, well, this player is like peaking right now. And uh, and this is like the staff, like this defensive coordinator just got like replaced. And it's like, like uh, two like American football fans can like debate about team A versus team B for hours and hours and hours and hours, like all the different layers of like nuance and detail. But I feel like tennis players don't have that same perspective. They don't have that same depth of understanding that it's wide and it's deep. And we're talking about layering hundreds of individual skills. And so day to day, there's going to be a lot of variation. And opponent to opponent to opponent, there's going to be a lot of interchanging of different skills and talents that don't always make sense on the surface. And it takes a lot of study beneath the surface before we can start kind of um, decoding the surface level data that you see and start to go beneath the surface and understand the interactions and how those different tools kind of bounce off of each other. It's really complicated. And I think tennis players need to start looking beneath the surface a little more. It's not either or. It's not like my game is better and their game is worse. Day to day, there's like super nuanced, complicated, like complex, uh, different layers of ability and who took better care of their body and who's eating better and sleeping better. It's not just about skill. It's who understands the tactics and like the patterns, who's mentally, you know, more tough, who's in physically better condition, on and on and on and on and on. And until you start addressing each of those different elements of the game, it's hard to have a, a full appreciation for the game. It's also hard to pinpoint what should I be working on and like what elements of my game are letting me down. That's just way more detailed and nuanced than like I hit my forehand harder. It's like that's like the most surface level thing that you can look at. Anyway, any given Sunday. Interesting. Um, and by the way, uh, let me just like address the fact that on like you know, a football team or a soccer team, like whatever type of football we're talking about, there's dozens and dozens of players that all are interacting. So that like that is more complicated. There's there's like thousands of uh, permutations and like uh, combinations of different ways that the team and all the different players and and positions are all like interacting with each other. Whereas so in a sense like tennis is more simple in a sense that we're just talking about one athlete versus another athlete, you know, in singles, doubles is more complicated, but the layers of different, but where tennis is more complicated is uh, one athlete has to fulfill all the roles of like all the different phases and all the different positions and all the different skills that are necessary to play the game. Whereas in a team sport, people specialize in like one type of skill, one type of talent. And in tennis, we got to do all the all the things, all the skills, all at the same time. So it's not so personnel wise, it's more simple. But in terms of like the actual skills needed, it's still very, very, very complex. Anyway, just some thoughts I had uh, watching football uh, this season. Hopefully that just kind of helps broaden your perspective a little bit. Thanks for watching. Hope you're doing well. Keep up the good work on your game. I'll talk to you again soon.